Hello students. Welcome to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. The topic that I will cover today is a concept called Shepherd's Lemma, which advanced level econ students are likely to be confronted with during the Consumer Choice Theory lecture. Although it may look difficult at first, I hope that all of you will be able to completely grasp this idea after watching my video. So, if you are interested in learning what Shepherd's Lemma is, please follow, follow me. Okay, here is what Shepherd's Lemma looks like. The lemma states that, if you partially differentiate the minimum or minimized expenditure function with respect to the price of a particular good, then you can derive a Hicksian or compensated demand function for that good. Here, I have just shown the simple case of two goods, x1 and x2, just for the sake of simplicity. In order to understand the lemma, you need to first start out with the definition of the expenditure function. Well, what on earth is the expenditure function and how is it defined? Here is the definition. The expenditure function, sometimes known as the minimum or minimized expenditure function is defined as the price of good 1 times the Hicksian demand for good 1 plus the price of good 2 times the Hicksian demand for good 2. This implies that the expenditure function always gives you the minimum expenditure that is required to reach the utility level of U given goods prices P1 and P2. So, it is also called a minimum value function. Now, given the following definition of the expenditure function, Let's differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to P1. Then we have partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to P1 equals the Hicksian demand function for good 1 plus P1 times the partial derivative of the Hicksian demand for good 1 with respect to P1 plus P2 times the partial derivative of the Hicksian demand for good 2 with respect to P1. Hmm. It may look a bit complicated, but in fact, we only have a total of just three terms here. So, if you differentiate the expenditure function with respect to P1, you get three terms on the right-hand side. Now, let's go back to slide 1 to see what Shepard's lemma stated. Do you see it? The lemma states that there should be only one term on the right-hand side of the equation, which is the Hicksian demand for good 1. However, we saw that when we simply differentiate the expenditure function, we are left with more than the Hicksian demand function on the right-hand side. Now, Let's go back to slide 3 to see what the result exactly looked like. Here, we have the Hicksian demand for good 1. And then, two more terms that look a bit complicated. What all this suggests is that, it is implied by Shepard's lemma that, those two terms should add up to 0. Otherwise, Shepard's lemma would not hold. But then, how can we find out if those two terms add up to 0? In other words, how can we prove the lemma? Well, one way to do it is to look at the conditions that should hold at the optimum of the following cost minimization problem. That is, minimize P1 times X1 plus P2 times X2 subject to U of X1 and X2 equal to a small u. Are you guys familiar with this cost minimization or constrained optimization problem? I am sure most of you guys are, as this is the optimization problem that you need to solve in order to find the Hicksian or compensated demand function which constitutes the solution to the problem. For those of you who forgot or did not quite understand the derivation process of the Hicksian demand function, I will upload another video covering this topic in due course. So, do come back again. Anyway, proving Shepard's lemma requires the use of the first order conditions of the aforementioned cost minimization problem. So, here I show you what they are, one by one. The first FOC condition is P1 equals lambda times partial derivative of u with respect to the Hicksian demand for good 1. The second one is, p2 equals, lambda times, partial derivative of u with respect to the Hicksian demand for good 2. The last one is the constraint of the minimization problem itself, which is, u of xh1 and xh2 equals small u. Please note that, x1 and x2 have been replaced with Hicksian demands, as these are the conditions that should hold at the optimum. And please note that lambda here is the Lagrange multiplier. With these first order conditions, what can we do? Well, we can try to replace P1 and P2 in the equation on the top of the slide, with lambda times derivative of U with respect to Hicksian demand for good 1, and lambda times derivative of U with respect to Hicksian demand for good 2, respectively, following the first order conditions. So, are you guys ready? Okay, let's begin our journey. However, my precious time is up now. Our journey shall continue in part 2 of my lecture video which will be uploaded in due course. Please do visit my channel again soon.
and don't ever forget to like and subscribe before you go. May God bless you all.